the Wrong Advice Podcast. I'm your host, John Picciuto, and I'm very excited to have Evan Johnson on with us today. Evan, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and no, I'm super excited to, uh, to have you on the pod today. Can you uh, give a quick introduction to the listeners to who you are? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Evan Johnson. I'm the owner and creative director of a small marketing agency named Stakeholm Industries. Um, I live on the East Coast. I'm married and have a dog, and uh, I collect watches. That's basically it. <laughs> so Evan and I met via the Grey NATO Slack, uh, which we were both yep. uh, Patreons or how you know fans of outstanding members of. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, so shout out to those guys. Um, mm -hmm. Been such a treat to be part of that community for like the last year yep. or so, and uh, I'm I'm excited to uh, have that sort of morph into having you on here today. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about your watch love, your collection, sure. how that sort of affinity uh, started for you, and then, like, you know, what led you to the Grenado and, and all things beyond. Yeah, so uh, I probably started getting interested in watches around, like, 15 years ago or so. And, you know, I, I mean, besides the, the couple watches that I have a memory of, but they were probably like from Macy's, you know, that I grew <laughs> up with, right? And probably like a lot of people back then, you know, that didn't really know what the world was. Um, I picked up a a diver and a uh, a, a, a pilot's watch uh, from Invicta, um, and you know, they they like had the the big uh, uh, canteen crown covers and stuff. Yeah. But like when you didn't know cool like yeah. that's that's neat you know <laughs> it's this it's this thing you know um and then i distinctly remember my first my first seiko which was like the next thing i moved into right i i sold both those things god knows where uh <laughs> and i got um the seiko atlas which you don't really see anymore but it's a it's a 60 minute bezel no hash marks um, with a internal bezel for the the uh, the compass mm -hmm. directions, right? Um, steel bracelet. That thing was cool. Uh, I should never have sold that. Um, but you know, so back in this era, uh, I was a barista. I was, I you know, we're we're both from the East Coast. I was working down in Doylestown. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, and uh, but living near Allentown uh, with my mom at the time, uh, so I was waking up at like three a.m. to to go open the, the coffee shop, uh, which was terrible. Don't do yeah. that. <laughs> uh, for those that are unfamiliar, it's it's like a it's like a hour ish drive each way. It's yeah, awful. Yeah, um, but I distinctly remember saving up for a Gen One Orange Monster. Um, because, you know, I was, I was starting to get into the world, you know, of watches. Instagram started being a thing that, you know, you could see cool things on. Um, some forum stuff. But, you know, I just, I, I discovered this thing. And it was, that was the one to have, right? Mm -hmm. So I distinctly remember getting that, uh, taking down to my local jewelry shop to get the bracelet resized because I know what I was doing with, with you know, pin and collar and stuff yet. Mm -hmm. And then, like, three days later, it fell off my wrist because the pin came out. Oh, no. Yeah. Did you uh, lose it? It was fine. Oh, no, okay. it, it, it came out on a carpet. It was, you know, I, I, I took a pin and collar out of a separate link. It, it was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but learned a lesson there. You know, learned <laughs> how to do my own bracelets and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then from there, you know, I just, I kind of started getting into it. I had, what, like the original Alpinist. Um, if you remember the original cocktail series, everybody had the like silvery blue one. Okay. I had the, the gold one with the kind of like warped Roman numerals. Another nice. one I should never have sold. It's always um, nice. Yeah, right? Well, it, at the time I was like, oh, I want something that's plated. I'm an <laughs> idiot. Uh, yeah. So I, I still, to be honest with you, I still feel that way. So, you know, I'd sure. Like, but then you look back and you're like, that was just a, that was a cool watch. Yeah. You know? and, yeah, yeah. and now I have a, now I have a, a search set up on a, like watch recon for it. Oh right? yeah. As you do. Yeah. And it hasn't paid any dividends yet. Uh, they come up sometimes, but whenever they come up, I'm like, 
too much. Yeah. Or, do I really want to spend like 500 bucks on this? Like, I want to buy a house someday. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you the know. The nostalgia yeah. factor is not 500 right? worth. Yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to speed the story along from there, uh, you know, I, I left the barista job at this point, started my, my marketing agency. Um, I'd gotten a Marine Master 300, hmm. uh, which was great. I loved that thing. It's the SBDX001. Uh, for five years in business, I bought uh, the watch I'm wearing today, which is the 2017 uh, Octavia reissue. If you oh, can see that. I love that watch. I love this watch. I love this that, is that cool the, watch. Is that the collaboration with Hodinkee? No, it's not the orange okay. boy. Oh, okay, this yeah, this yeah. is just the plain base model. Yep. You know, I have it on a on one of those weird like vinyl-y um old racer. School. Yeah. Yeah, like like big whole tropic things that like what I don't know what this is made out of, but it's the best rubber <laughs> strap I've ever worn. Yeah. Um, you know, uh what, like a year and a half ago I got married, so I sold Congrats. off a couple pieces. Thank you. Uh sold off like five pieces, bought a um uh gs single sign snowflake Ooh. Uh, yeah and then from there i was like oh titanium and spring drive is cool <laughs> so i sold the off a couple hole more pieces, right? bigger. <laughs> uh so i sold off a couple more pieces got a double signed titanium spring drive diver from grand oh. seiko um yeah and you know i've i've had a couple weird things since then i have a I have a SIN 203 out at service right now that I will see between 14 to 18 weeks from now. Ooh. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, Not really. um, <laughs> very excited about that one. Yeah. Uh, I have an original Icapod uh, Megapod from, like, you know, what would that be? Like yeah. 2005? Yeah, yeah. I yeah think? it's sick. You know, it's running a little slow. That one needs service too, but that's got to wait because my wife will be like, and, and I love my wife. I love her very much. I'm not, you know, one of those guys that complains, but yeah. she'll be wondering why, you know, I have this hobby, you know? So, yeah. That's yeah. Fair. So that's, that's my watch world in a nutshell. That's uh, pretty cool. We can get into as much detail as you want, but a couple, a yeah. couple of things that yeah. strike me that I think is cool is like the yeah, commemor yeah. commemoratization kind of watch. Um, hmm. I have a strong affinity for that. I've done that a million times in my life, whether it's yeah. a birthday watch, uh momentous business situation watch. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm eyeing something up this year because I've got oh, yeah. things going well. Yeah, I don't know what I want to nice. do, but it's gonna be okay. something stupid. I am on my view, I am single, zero dependence. So Dude. the 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 resource allocation can be slightly Yeah, yeah. <laughs> slightly different. Slightly more reckless. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Um in my opinion, the, the commemorative watch can be a tricky thing, right? Once you do like, like two or three of them, because mm -hmm. you, you know, you got this big birthday, you got the wedding, you got this big business thing. Well, if I keep on at this pace, <laughs> by the time I'm in my sixties, I'm going to have like 20 watches that are like commemorative and very yeah. important. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> Totally yeah. agree with you. Uh, I was actually just having this conversation with my cousin today because oh, yeah. I don't know that I want to be like a seven, eight watch collector guy. Right. And I am now sure. going down that path. Yeah. I have a bunch of Unimatics. Um, I've got the limited edition Grand Seiko, uh, Hodinkee, GMT in blue. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, I've got all the John Mayer G-Shocks. I've got five other G-Shocks. I've yep. got a, I've oh, got a yeah. Weiss. I've got a Nomos. I got a bunch of shit. I've got too much shit is what it boils yeah, down yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I just, you know, when you run out of space in your watch box, you're like, oh, I could just buy another watch box. And I could also be like, well, I could also stop buying watches. <laughs> right. I, I see these guys and like, I, I don't go on the, the Reddit watch forum anymore for one of these reasons. I see these guys that are like, I have one spot left. What should I get? Yeah. Dude, you don't have to. Just yeah. wait. You just, you know, I find um, that I find that with the Grenado Slack a lot. Wrist check is just like a problem for me. Like I try to I try to only check it yeah. like once or twice a week because I'm like, ooh, oh, well, that should be on my you, list. But then you keep clicking back and it's like plus two hundred and thirty <laughs> posts. And I know. You're like, well, 
what what the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah, seriously, it, it's it's fucked me up because like so I, I decided I wanted to make something commemorative for this year. Cool. And what that will be is I don't know, but like the thought process between between like a new Rolex or something doesn't really speak to me. Um, so I'm leaning vintage in mm-hmm. my current thought process right now. That will change in the next three to five hours. I'm sure. Yeah, of course. As as these things do. Yeah, um, yeah. once you have dinner, like... you, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. like the idea of vintage and then the the modern marketplace, I think, is just thrown everything sort of back at your face of what you can't have, even if you have the resources, which frustrates the yeah. fuck out of me. So it's like and, a weird... And... Yeah, it's a weird thing where I I'm not care. really sure. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you make it difficult for me to buy it? All right. It's just yeah. fine. Yeah. That's your prerogative. But yeah, it tries I'm not me crazy. interested anymore. Yeah. So I'm yep. the same way. Like, the idea of having to go to a secondary marketplace to buy something that I know is made in the tens of thousands, if not, you know, six figure numbers of quantities, yep. that just irks me. Like, we're, yeah. we're, let's not pretend that this you. is a scarce good. <laughs> right. Well, and listen, I, I, I don't think I've ever bought a watch at an AD. Um, it was either, you know, from some like sketchy dude on Instagram, <laughs> uh, or like Chrono 24 or, you know, buying and selling on the TGN Slack. Like I got my Ichapod from some dude that usually sells sneakers in Hong Kong. That's cool. Yeah. It took like three weeks to get to me because he didn't know how to fill out the the import paperwork, right? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, it was my uncle's." Yeah, cool, man. That but, is cool. And it, you know, not the most trustworthy thing, but I got yeah. it for a deal, and <laughs> great, right? That, that's cool. If it was yeah, if it was something I knew was being produced and I could theoretically go down to my tutor AD and get it, and they're just like, mm, "Yeah, you're not the one." Yeah. Uh, all right, that's less attractive. <laughs> So I totally agree. It's it's the conundrum because there's so many things that I like that I would probably enjoy owning that I will yeah. basically on principle never buy it because it's right. just I'm spiteful, I guess, to a brand that well, doesn't know that I exist. Like it's like you know, and, and we 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 know who we're talking about, right? We're we're yeah. talking about Rolex, and I don't think Rolexes are are bad watches no. or not worth it, right? And I also don't want to be the guy, you know, the 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 Grand Seiko guy that, you know, pushes his glasses up on his nose and says, well, actually, yeah. but, you know, those are awesome watches for comparatively not a crazy amount of money mm-hmm. and I can get them. Yeah. You know, so cool. Yeah. It's one of those things where I think the Instagramification of the hobby and... Yep the showmanship of it all has almost sort of decreased just slightly my love for it. And then my desire to go out and get cool things that are small batch independent. Like I, you know, like I said, I own a Nomos. It's one of one seventy five that they produced. Nice. I own a watch from uh, uh, Weiss watch company. They're based out of Mm -hmm. Nashville. I don't know if you know, Cameron Uh, mine's one of 25, which is really fucking cool. It's him him and his wife run a company like they're making watches themselves like that's fucking cool to me and i would rather be supportive of a brand like that than one that makes it feel like i'm not acceptable or you know i'm not allowed to be part of the club and i say that with the caveat that i've owned a few rolexes so um i bought them obviously pre-covid pre-craziness and i've subsequently sold them more or less because as i grew to love watches more i grew less to love the commodification of it from their perspective right like they're sure. the way they look at the consumer is less about <clears throat> whether this will be like a momentous amazing thing for them and less about well are they going to go buy a million dollars worth of jewelry then they can get a daytona it's like right. oh, I'm not not never going to be one of those people <laughs> so so i think Social media, you know, when we look at it 50 or 100 years from now, we're going to say it's probably one of the worst things that we've ever done to ourselves. Oh, yeah. Um, So there's that. Um, It's great to get cool photos to, like, (laughs) screenshot and, like, like keep an inspiration folder, right? Yeah. I mean, I am a um, photographer, so. Same. 
Yeah, so it's like and okay, I, cool. But at at the same time, I never really got the the sense of community and you know connection that people talk about, especially in our hobby, about mm -hmm. you know other people on social media, and that's mm -hmm. fine. You know, I'm yeah. I I live a rich life. I don't I don't necessarily need you know that community. It's nice from the TGN Slack, so yeah. I get it there. You know, mm -hmm. the other thing that ties in with you know what you were saying about about certain brands and how they treat people. Um, I just finished reading uh, Enzo Ferrari's biography. Oh, nice. uh, just I was going through the the uh, Charlotte airport and needed a book to read, so that looked good. I grabbed that and a box of C's candy and spent almost a hundred dollars. <laughs> so great. Yeah, nice. Uh, um, and and one of the interesting things that they talked about in it uh, as they were setting up their their American um, kind of resellers and representatives and stuff was that if you treat Americans like garbage, they'll love you forever. And I don't know if that's, you know, how they still do things or how any of these brands still do things or if it's still in the playbook or if it's or if it's ingrained into culture in, in luxury, right? But one of the things was that if, if you treat Americans like trash, they're going to say, I really want this, I which find is that very, very interesting, very yeah. enlightening. Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> shit. Now yeah. that is making me think about some things that, right? yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've wanted things. I think because of experiences I've had in, in stores, luxury goods primarily, yep. and had terrible experiences getting them. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're seeing a mind be blown in real time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. I like that. Shit. I think they, that's, it, it still does work. It works on I mean, me. That's I, for sure. I don't like it, but yeah. Oh, yeah. it does work. Yeah. Yeah. That's wildly interesting. Um, yeah shit wow that's that's blowing my mind um is the enzo ferrari book the one that the upcoming adam driver movie is based on is that biography uh, i think it's out but okay. yes okay, yeah right. um and it's honestly it's it's a really good book mm -hmm. um it's it starts with his birth and goes to his death a lot of it is fairly detailed recounting of the early years of of uh racing and formula and, and f1 yeah um saying like yeah and then this driver hit a patch of oil and died during this race you know yeah. things like that like it it and it does that because ferrari cared about racing he did not give a shit about the consumer cars oh he didn't care. He he thought those people were suckers. <laughs> he he cared about racing, and that was it. That's um, cool. Yeah, which cool. You know, it, he was a very interesting man. Um, and frankly, the book starts with a a intro from the author talking about how like, hey, some of this stuff is going to come off as as not that nice. I'm trying to do a very straightforward and and very you know fair view of this man a complicated that, person yeah yeah a very complicated person yeah um it was really good did I, you I really liked it i'm assuming you saw ford versus ferrari i did i did one of my favorite yeah. movies uh i watched that movie a lot i think just yeah. It's a beautiful. I mean, I think anybody who's into watches, into cameras, uh, is probably into like that time period and yeah, uh, those kind of uh, nostalgic so, films. I liked that movie so much when when I saw when I saw the Ferrari guys and specifically Enzo, which I doubt he was actually at that race. He didn't travel a yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah, but they had the the tiny little the tiny little Ferrari lapel pins. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that looks good. So after that, I started shopping around to my vendors to get a tiny little uh, logo. That's pin, awesome. Uh, that that you know, me and my team can wear when we go to places, and it's it's a quarter inch to a side. It's a square. Um, and enamel. Most places, yep, yep, uh, all enameled and everything. 
and most places were like, we can't make anything that small. But <laughs> credit where it's due, uh, Wizard Pins, when I, when I told them what I wanted, they said, yeah, no problem. How many do you want? That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so, so now whenever we go to a networking thing or anything like that, we all have, you know, we all have matching lapel pins. I like that. You know? I think yeah. it's subtle and it, it's like, you know, the, the branding of it all is cool. I was actually well, very randomly, uh, I want to say, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, uh, a buddy of mine, Scott, wanted to start an enamel pin business. And nice. I was like, Scott, we're not going to sell enamel pins. I was like, dude, what are you talking about? He's like, man, you remember like when the Olympics used to happen and we you would get like those sets and like all that? He's like, we should do that. And I was like, yeah, but like you do realize you don't see that stuff anymore because nobody fucking buys it. I was like, right. great. It's cool. It's nostalgic. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Dude, but it turns out yeah. nowadays, like, look, it's a slave one. In yeah, that's cool. Pen. Yeah. I have, I have the Millennium Falcon somewhere. I have, I'm, I'm, I how I found, I'm not a collector. I just somehow yeah. ended up with these. The zombie. Dude oh, that's awesome. From, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're cool. I, I actually have a small pin collection of, wait for <laughs> it, Olympic pins. Uh, but it's, you know, it's. I don't know that it makes for a great business. It makes for a great, you know, hobby to collect and or to have some. Sure. But, I, you know, how many manufacturers are there? It's, you said that you found one. So. Right. Well, I, I imagine it's, so I, I deal with a lot of vendors in my in my day job. I imagine it's very similar to any print shop that, if you have the machinery, as long as it's moving, mm. you're you're making money, right? Yeah. If it's if it's just sitting idle overnight, that's wasted opportunity, man. You know? Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, I'm curious. Uh, first of all, I think Stay Calm Industries is probably the greatest name for uh, a marketing company I've Thank ever you. heard. Um, Comes from great. the tattoos. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, talk to me about the impetus of starting something on your own versus say you know, continuing on or being, you know, another cog in the wheel at a separate company. Yeah, sure. So that barista job that I mentioned, um, I had gone in, and this was what, 2013. Uh, I had gone in January 31st, uh, worked my shift and they said, you know, we were all in there, which was weird. And they said, Hey, nobody's stock anything tonight. Or come in tomorrow. And we were like, what? And they were like, you're all laid off. We're closing. And we said, oh, okay. So cool. Um, but the next day, I decided to start an advertising agency. Uh, I was watching a lot of Mad Men at the time. <laughs> nice. Um, yep. And um, I, I had always paid attention to that stuff, right? When I worked at uh, Best Buy or Blick Art Supply or AutoZone or whatever, you know, before, um, after, after the little bit of college I did, uh, I always paid attention to like, well, what are these people doing? That thing doesn't look that good. This website sucks, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Um, so I figured as a laid off barista, there's not really a lot of risk in starting this, right? I can just say, yeah, I'm going to start an advertising agency. So I then proceeded to go on a week-long vacation, which I had already booked with some friends the next week, uh, to a off-season ski cabin in West Virginia, uh, drank gin tonics in the sunroom, and had a panic attack the whole time while I built <laughs> my first website. It was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, from there... The first month I signed, I was very lucky. I signed a bar and a record store down in Doylestown uh, right away. Uh, so I was able to pay, you know, my car insurance and my car payment, right? Mm -hmm. um, and luckily I was, you know, living at my mom, so I was pretty rent-free. She was a mm -hmm. great roommate. <laughs> uh, um, and I just kind of started growing up from there, you know, and I, I didn't know anything. So when this bar said that they needed a new website and they asked me if I could do that, I said, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I think it cost them like 600 bucks, you know, but I was a kid. I was, I was 23. I, I felt like a kid, right? 25? I don't know, man. Uh, close close enough. enough. Yeah, yeah, whatever. 
Um, and I said, yeah, I can do that. And then I went home and learned how to do that. You know, um, now I have a couple employees. They're over there. Uh, I rent an office. I deal with everything from, uh, uh, Icelandic frozen fish to German medical device to wedding venues and clothing retail and luxury grill manufacturers. Like, yeah. And, and we do everything from branding to websites to, you know, social media management, paid ad gen, uh, not to make this sale -y. but, uh, you know, we're, we're full service. And I just, I figured it out because I wanted to do it. So I taught myself, um, and I did it because I wanted to be, we didn't niche down because I wanted to be doing something different every day. Mm. I want to get bored. I want to be figuring out, you know, how to optimize this click through rate by, you know, three cents for this month over last month. It, God bless those people that can do yeah. that. I'm not that guy, you mm. know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how we started. And I'm, why. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the pragmatism surrounding like major life decisions like that. Um, yeah. I had a very similar experience. Mine happened a lot later in life, but at, you know, in August of 2020, I got laid off from my job, COVID. Uh, sure. Also, I hired my first employee February 19th before COVID. Oh, wow. I started, yeah, uh, that was I, fun. I started the job on March 9th by March 11th, <laughs> my second wow. day. We yeah. were fully remote. And then, yep. you know, shit happens. Um, first in, first out, right? Yeah. Or last in, first out. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. August panic attack, uh, trip around the country in my Jeep because I cool. didn't know, have anything, couldn't go anywhere. Um, right. And I was like, what the fuck do I want to do with my life? And it's funny how when you're in a position of utter chaos and everything in the fucking world is falling apart, both figuratively and literally, yeah. that I had this sort of... Uh, epiphany moment where i was like i will never work for anybody else ever again in my life um go. sounds as if you had a very similar experience i'm a terrible employee yeah yeah <laughs> yeah same yeah. No, i'm completely with you same yeah. I, I, it's one of those things where through a lot of my 20s and into my early 30s i'm now 38 uh i spent so many uh, like different jobs and sales trying to be successful for somebody else's product and somebody else's uh thing that yeah. i i never like enjoyed it i liked the compensation i didn't like sure. what i was doing and but i never stopped to ask myself if i like liked it or if i cared i just was doing sure. it because you know you got to pay for your car you know it's and like... i i don't begrudge them you know wanting and having people work for them to, mm, oh, to yeah. make them that money. That's I'm doing that thing now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just, I wanted to be able to make my own decisions, whether that meant I was, you know, going to fail or going to succeed. Like I said, I hope to buy a house someday. That'll mm -hmm. be nice. Right. Yeah. Um, and if, if I was doing this, well, the thing is, if I was doing this, this for somebody else, I wouldn't be here because they would have said, you're an employed barista. We don't yeah. need to hire you. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. I yeah. also, I like the idea that I hate the fucking word entrepreneur. I know it's such like a, Same. It, it's my least favorite thing. I do a million things. Don't get me wrong. And I am by myself. I don't have a blanket or, you know, a fucking... Uh, parachute behind me it's just me um yeah. i don't like the term i will say that sort of understanding that everything in my life lives and dies by my decisions is at times incredibly uh powerful and also slightly terrifying but it also makes you oh. yeah i i like to say so when i first started it flipped between awesome and terrifying every like yeah. 10 minutes yeah. and now we're out to like maybe like a month or so you okay. know it'll be yeah and and the terrifying parts are much shorter it's it's nice but well, yeah it's with the know. benefit of time i think what it like boils down to is like once you build up enough uh equity in yourself and whether yep. it's financial or 
um, you know, understanding and comfortability in what you're doing. I think once you have that position of equity in yourself, again, you have the opportunity to trust yourself. And yep. I, I've and and you know what you're doing, and you're confident, and you also see things, mm. right? You know, I just had a conversation with a client that wants to move from retainer to project based, and I saw it coming for like a month. You know, mm-hmm. I was just waiting for him to to bring it up and have the conversation. And, you know, it's almost the end of the month. So that's when he did it. And that's yeah. fine. You know, mm-hmm. it's I'm lucky enough to be at a place where losing a client or two or, or things shifting like that isn't something I need to worry too much about. You know, if, if, if they all decide to leave or have them decide to leave, I'm going to, you want a creative director? Do you want to? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. But but it's the you know i'm more confident in my position and i can see these trends from a from a longer timeline so i know better how to prepare and i've been consciously for the past couple of years working harder on working on my business hmm. and not in my business yeah my favorite thing to do is to replace myself you know i don't do any social media management. I don't do any graphic design or branding or web development. I have those people. Yeah. You tell them if something looks good or not. Mm-hmm. But what I concentrate on is building the business, creating systems, creating processes, signing new clients, uh, and, and deciding where we're going to be going. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, the 9,000 other things that takes to run a company. Oh, yeah. 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 My, my, um, my, uh, Employee compensation insurance decided that they, they want to do a full audit on me to confirm that they're charging me the right rates, which is fine. Yeah. That's what they do. Mm. But now I have to figure out how to go find the reports that they need and export yeah. those and ask my accountant and send them. And I won't have to use these skills that I gain again until I forget them. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so, I, I do. Great. I do. I do like that. There is a part of like business. Like when you talk about losing a client, or when I think of it, like not getting an opportunity to shoot something that I really wanted, or you know, being sure. excluded from opportunities, or failing on something that I tried really hard for. I almost always am now, and this is with the benefit of hindsight and age, come to the realization that it's just opening up the opportunity for something else. I yep. think if you take any good failure, any good loss in life and dwell on it, it's going to totally wreck you. But if you're able to look yeah. at it as opening up the opportunity of, okay, I don't have to work for this customer anymore. I can find someone bigger, better, or more strategically yep. aligned with what we're doing. And what can I learn from it? Yeah. You know, cause it's not all them. It's not all me, but it's, it's a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. What can I learn from it? What can I do better next time? How can we, optimize this process how can we get better at this so that when the next opportunity comes along or you know this opportunity that just got opened up because now we have this space how can we do this better and make sure that this one doesn't go anywhere when you just personality you know sometimes there's nothing you can do right yeah when you have a company name stay calm i think it probably comes second nature to you but i am curious in in this instance where you're losing a customer not by will but by choice how do you stay focused stay calm in the moment and understand that that there's like opportunity in the loss um i've been doing this for so long that this has happened so many more times to me Mm. than they have had to do this yeah so i almost treat it like a i i tell them like hey this is okay this happens I'm not worried about it. I don't want you to feel worried about it. And notice how my voice just got softer and more calming, right? I have to walk them through, you know, this is a normal thing, Mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of the businesses we work with, they've never had to do this before, or they feel like they're firing somebody. And like, buddy, I've been, if, if you look at every client as a job I've interviewed for, and, you know, when I lose that client, I'm getting fired. I've been hired and fired more times than a lot of people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and it just, it, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's not personal, you know. Yeah. Maybe it is, but I'm not going to say it is. Right. Yeah. 
I look at um, it like it's any business. any good opportunity that I don't get is not me, right? Yeah, we have different or, visions, and and maybe it is you, and that's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. Because maybe yeah. So I I kind of have two two kind of major internal rules, right? That all of this is dating, and you need to communicate or break up, mm. right? So all of it's dating. All of it is, do I mesh with this person? Do I jive with them? Do we, you know, communicate well? Do we work on the same wavelength? Do they make time for our relationship, right? Because if they give me, so we do status calls every Tuesday with every single one of our clients, 15 minutes, back-to-back -back phone calls, I'm, you know, on the phone from 9.15 till 12 every day, every Tuesday. Um, if that's the only time that I talk to them every week, and I constantly ask them to set a time for like a strategy meeting or, you know, a creative discussion around this upcoming ad campaign, and they never do, that says something, right? If the girl you're you're trying to see always, you know, she texts you, but she never wants to hang out, is that a good relationship? No. No. It's not. No. Um, and then if you are in a good relationship, right, if you do jive, if you do have, have time for each other and you take each other seriously, right, then you need to communicate. And this is a, this is a rule my wife and I have had since, you know, we started dating uh, like 10 years ago. Uh, so almost the same amount of time as I've had my agency. Um, communicator break up. If, if something's wrong, if you don't want to talk about it, if you don't want to, you know, I don't, I can't, you know, know that I can't read minds and same thing with me, right? If, if I'm upset about something, I need to talk to you about it or if something's going great, cool, man, tell me, you know, yeah. same thing goes for clients. If they're unhappy with something and they don't say anything, yeah, you're not a mind reader. What am I supposed yeah. to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm curious because it seems like that mentality uh, permeates across aspects of your life, whether it's your collection, break up with something, right? You, you've you been yeah. in and out of a lot of watches yeah. business-wise. <laughs> um, what it, Was there a moment that you can look back on uh, in your 20s and your th whenever that that mentality uh, became like form for your process, it, whether it's business wise or, or you know watch wise. But I'm I'm curious because it's a very pragmatic approach towards uh, everything, right? So I'm uh, if if you can recall a moment where this sort of mentality of communicator breakup came and kind of sat with you. So okay, so you're asking if there was a kind of definitive moment of where this this pragmatism came from mm -hmm. um my wife and i started dating about nine months after i started my agency and i told her i have a marketing agency and she was like oh cool and she thought it was this it wasn't um i still lived with my mom uh who you know when she asked me if i had roommates i said yep uh her yeah. name's my mom she's really yeah. great yeah. yeah. Uh, we have been through a lot together. Um, our our wedding song for our, like private last dance, you know, when everybody else had left, uh, was "When They Fight, They Fight" by uh, the Generationals. Uh, which, if you've never heard, it's a very fun song. Uh, it's very you know kind of nineteen sixties y. Um, and I learned this with her, you know. I learned this with, well, I love this person. If I want to stick with her, uh, I've learned how to communicate better. I have to tell her what I'm thinking and feeling. Uh, and, and she learned the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been a process. And when you look at all of these as relationships, right? Because that's really what they are. I was just talking to um, the, the, uh, director of communications for the city I live in uh, at lunch today. And they were saying, well, we're designing this thing. It's for businesses, but we still want to make it appealing to people. I said, well, yeah, because even if it's B2B, there 
it's still people in that business. It's not just this like weird entity, right? Um, everything's relationships. Everything's you know figuring out how to talk to another uh, another person, communicate, make a connection, and whether that connection ends up in you getting married or them buying a, a you know seven thousand dollar grill. Cool. <laughs> It's still it's still a relationship, you know. So uh, it was just the experience of dating my my wife that made me realize all of this. And then I guess I was smart enough to take this and and put it into uh, uh, the business world. Also, I really love that. Yeah. I think uh, I've benefited a lot as I've gotten older with realizing that the relationships that you maintain and foster in your life will inevitably serve macro amounts of dividends later on there was um, about. yeah and it took a long time honestly to get here i, I like i hated people for all like i fucking oh, you know yeah. yeah you know you go on the internet on a daily basis there's a lot of people i'd like to tell oh, fuck off awesome. so, i know. got i got stay calm tattooed on my wrists yeah. so that i could tell myself to stay calm yeah uh yeah it's uh people still aren't always my favorite thing yeah. in the world no you know. i i meant more along the lines of like there is such beauty in getting to a point where like i understand that like so much of my 20s was consumed with about being successful and winning at everyone else's yeah. detriment and yeah. now i think as you get older you realize the more you're able to rely on other people and then also like put other people on to amazing opportunities and things in life yep. that's so much more rewarding than any individual success i'll ever have and especially yeah. in a creative field uh, like for me if i get someone a job to do something even if i'm capable of doing it but i know it's right for them and maybe not perfect for me that yeah. fucking hits so much it better feels than good any... yeah yep. yeah which if, so i didn't feel that way for a while <laughs> i i've i've approached my market that way in in the lehigh valley Right, uh, Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton. You know, if I'm I'm constantly looking for people that like somebody approaches us for a website or a photo shoot, and their budget isn't where you know we need it to be, that I can push stuff down to them because mm -hmm. you know they're they're new, they're they're getting into it. Um, and then we also make the same relationships with the people above us, right? You know, these these agencies that have been around for. For 50 years and they represent like mac truck and just born candy who if you don't know are the manufacturers of peeps uh you know things like that right mm -hmm. and and we try and pass around business um when the people that i try and build the good relationship with try and you know get business out from under me that i'm already pitching that changes things, you yeah, know. We're we're sure. gonna have a different relationship now, you yeah, know. Well, yeah, but yeah, but the valley's so big that I don't really have to worry about it. You know, the, mm. there's there's enough here that everybody can be successful. If you think there's not, you need you need to go for a drive and and Steve comes, <laughs> you know, these walls and and get out there a little bit and remind yourself that that the world's more than you know the section, right? Yeah. It's a, um, that's a yeah. that's a them that's a them problem Definitely. for sure yeah. yeah as you grow i mean we're we're in the beginning times of a year well the end of january um yeah. i've always found january to be either the best or worst month of the year for one reason or another i've yeah. had equal greatness equal terribleness this month <laughs> it's been like the never-ending month for some reason i don't know if you uh -oh. can relate to that but we also moved very quickly yeah. yeah, it's it's been like this week has been forever. We're we're recording this on a Wednesday. Um, it's been a long week. It's been a long month. Also, somehow it's the thirty first already. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. a there's a Ron Pope song that goes, "The years move fast, but the days move slow." And I they think do. that that mention is just like perfect because every single day feels like it's never ending and then all of a sudden you're like jesus christ it's february oh, or one twelfth of the year done <laughs> yep um i'm curious if when you look at the rest of the year like not even business-wise just life-wise yeah. and you look at like the next opportunity that you have coming across like what are some of your hopes and 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 desires for for what 2024 has for you um i am 
I've been doing a lot of research lately in new markets. Uh, been looking at, you know, doing expansion. I'm currently putting together a deck to do some fundraising to, you know, like I said, we're, we're primarily in the Lehigh Valley right now. Um, we have some stuff, you know, outside of it. I'm going to do fundraising to expand into, like, Berks, Bucks, Montgomery counties, you know, mm-hmm. uh, if you're familiar with the area, there's just, there's tons of opportunity. There's tons yeah. of business there, you know. Um, so there's that. That's kind of the main thing we're looking at. Uh, as part of that, we're, we will be bringing on a new, well, another account manager uh, to handle, you know, that business and, and building that business. Um, I'm very excited about Hiring a uh, a administrator, project manager, executive assistant combo. You know, um, I spend a lot of time like negotiating for meeting times and sending out calendar invites and packaging up files and very important stuff. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. things that I don't need to be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're we're excited for those. Um, the main thing I've been doing this month besides, you know, current work and pitching new work is really kind of reworking our, our, uh, SOWs to make them more in line with what we're actually doing. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, last year we started actually tracking time, uh, don't tell me if my clients, um, it, and it's, it's not really for them. It's for us. So we have the internal analytics of, well, we know we made money on this project, but what was our actual effective hourly rate on it? Yeah. You know, how long did it actually take? What were we actually doing there? You know, when we, when we combine all the pieces, right. Um, so we're going through and realizing that like, Hey, we need to be upping our minimums to about four X what they were. Uh, hmm. That means we're going to make, I mean, listen, we're doing fine. That's going to mean we're making more money. We're also signing less clients, right? Until, until the tail of our clients that, that are aware of us and potentials catches up with our new billing uh, era, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which is fine. You know, our average client life is around uh, five or six years. Uh, so we're, we're very happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, lots of, lots of internal work, lots of, uh, figuring out what, you know, we're doing now to prepare for the next five, 10, 20 years. Um, really my goal is to, I'm very excited to retire. I I can't wait. Uh, and the, the goal is that, you know, I can own this and it can run and be successful and stand its own two legs while I, you know, wake up at nine, uh, drink some coffee, read, take my dog for a walk, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. enjoy yeah. the so, life. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And then pull up, uh, once a year to, to an owner's meeting, get my, get my draw check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds nice. Yeah. Right. For yeah. sure. Someday. Someday. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, uh, I'm a firm believer of if you put the right practices in place and have the right targeted mindset you can accomplish anything in your life uh i blow myself away on a daily basis the shit i'm getting to do that truthfully three years ago wasn't even like within my verbiage like the oh yeah the the world that i live in now in the happiness that i've achieved in a very relatively short period of time was well beyond any of my wildest hopes or dreams yeah as early as three years ago see i i was on i was on an all-day photo shoot last last week uh at a brewery we just signed Oh, nice. And, you know, it was, it was like 3.34. I had been there since, you know, 8 in the morning, right? Um, and this one lady was like, do you hate these days? I was like, no, man. I mean, they're not my favorite because, like, I still have You're work not to do it. when I get yeah, home, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. You know, but, but no, I don't hate anything about what I do because... I get to do this, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not selling cell phones at, at Best Buy. I'm not selling auto parts. Uh, like this is way better. The worst day of this is better, you know? Oh, see, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's so yeah. true. When you find the thing that even the shittiest part of your job is still bring you joy, you know, you're doing the right thing. That's right. That's yeah. right. 
Evan, I, uh, I'm greatly appreciative of your time today. I'm super glad we're able to wonderful. do this. Uh, I had such yep. a great time talking with you and uh, really, really glad you were able to come on the podcast today. And uh, just really thank you so much for your time today, man. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Take care. 